Did you know that a single queen bee has the incredible ability to lay up to 2000 eggs per day? Yes, you heard it right, 2000. That's equivalent to laying her own body weight in eggs every day. Meanwhile, us humans can only hope to reproduce one progeny at a time. So now, buckle up because we are about to dive into the world of reproduction and explore the diverse ways in which different organisms reproduce and the amazing mechanisms they use to pass on their genes and ensure the survival of their species. So, in this video, we will cover the definition and purpose of reproduction, lifespan of organisms, basic features of reproduction, and all the modes of reproduction. Let's first see what is reproduction. So, it is a fundamental biological process that ensures the continuity of life on our planet. But have you ever wondered what is the purpose of reproduction? What is the reason for organisms to engage in the process of reproduction? It's crucial for several reasons. Firstly, it maintains the continuity of species. Secondly, it maintains the population of young, adult, and aged individuals. Thirdly, it introduces variations in organisms, which are essential for adaptations and evolution. Finally, life exists on Earth due to reproduction in organisms. If you want to learn more about how living things reproduce, check out the awesome Edurev notes. These notes are written in a way that's easy to understand and they follow the NCRT closely as well which builds your confidence even more. Let's talk about something really interesting that is, the connection between an organism's lifespan and its ability to reproduce. Reproduction is essential for maintaining the continuity of species, but did you know that an organism's lifespan plays a critical role in achieving this goal? It's true. So, let's first learn what exactly is lifespan. It's the period from an organism's birth to its natural death. And let me tell you, the lifespan of organisms varies wildly from just a few days to thousands of years. Imagine being a butterfly and living for only one to two weeks. Or being a banyan tree and living for thousands of years you'd be the oldest thing in the neighborhood. But here is the kicker in general, organisms have a limited lifespan, which means they can only reproduce for a certain period. As an organism ages, its reproductive capacity gradually declines, and eventually, it becomes unable to reproduce altogether. So, the timing and frequency of reproduction are crucial for the survival and propagation of a species. Now coming back to the reproduction part, the process of reproduction involves several basic features that are common to all modes of reproduction. Synthesis of RNA, proteins, and biochemicals necessary for new cell tissue production. DNA replication to transmit genetic information to newly formed cells. Cell division to produce daughter cells for growth and specialized cell production. Growth of cells to develop mature reproductive cell structures. Formation of reproductive units, gametes or spores, through sexual or asexual reproduction. Formation of new individuals from reproductive units through sexual or asexual reproduction mechanisms. Now as we know, reproduction is the process by which living organisms produce new individuals of the same species. This can be achieved through two main methods, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. And let's talk about these one by one. Talking about asexual reproduction, it involves one parent and creates genetically identical offspring seen in simpler organisms like bacteria and some plants. This is achieved through processes like budding, fragmentation and parthenogenesis etc. For example, an amoeba divides through binary fission, creating two identical daughter cells. Sexual reproduction requires two parents. In this, male and female reproductive cells combine to form a new individual. It is seen in most animals and some plants like humans, dogs, cats, and flowering plants. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not all organisms reproduce with asexual reproduction if it's simple and involves a single parent only? Wouldn't that be easy if there is no sexual reproduction? Well, my friends, 
Sexual reproduction ensures genetic diversity among offspring, which is essential for adaptation and evolution. So, there you have it. Asexual and sexual reproduction may be different, but they both have their unique advantages. Now let's explore the different types of asexual reproduction. It can take various forms, including budding, fragmentation, and parthenogenesis. First up, we have budding, no, not the kind you do with your bestie, but the one where offspring literally grow on their parents' body like a strange growth. To understand how budding works, let's take an example of a hydra. Hydras are fascinating creatures that have a tubular body with a crown of tentacles at one end. During budding, a small bulge, or bud, develops on the body of the hydra. This bud grows and develops into a miniature version of the parent organism. As it grows, it develops all the necessary structures, such as a mouth, tentacles, and a digestive system. Once the new individual is fully formed, it detaches itself from the parent organism and goes off to lead its own independent life. This process can occur repeatedly, resulting in the formation of a cluster of individuals that are genetically identical. Interestingly, budding is not limited to hydra alone. It is also observed in other animals, such as corals, sponges, and some species of insects. In plants, budding can occur in the form of vegetative propagation, where new individuals develop from the stems or leaves of the parent plant. The next process we will discuss is fragmentation, which involves the separation of a parent organism into smaller pieces, each of which can develop into a new individual organism. This is a form of asexual reproduction where the organism essentially divides into multiple pieces, each of which can grow and develop independently. To better understand fragmentation, let's take the example of a planarian, a type of flatworm that lives in freshwater habitats. Planarians are fascinating creatures that can regenerate their entire body from just a small piece of their body. When a planarian is cut into two or more pieces, each piece can regenerate into a complete, genetically identical individual. Interestingly, fragmentation can also occur naturally in some organisms, such as in the case of starfish. Starfish have the remarkable ability to regenerate their limbs, allowing them to survive attacks from predators or other environmental stressors. And at the end let's discuss parthenogenesis. It is a fascinating form of asexual reproduction that occurs when a female organism produces offspring without the need for fertilization by a male. This process is observed in many species, including insects, fishes, reptiles, and even some birds. Parthenogenesis occurs when an egg cell is stimulated to begin developing into an embryo without being fertilized by sperm. In some species, this process can occur naturally, while in others, it may require specific environmental or genetic triggers. To better understand parthenogenesis, let's take the example of the whiptail lizard. Whiptail lizards are an all-female species that reproduce through parthenogenesis. During the reproductive process, the lizards produce eggs that are genetically identical to themselves, without the need for fertilization by a male. This type of asexual reproduction can be helpful in certain circumstances, such as when males are scarce or when females are under stress. It also has the potential to increase genetic diversity within a population, which can be advantageous in the long run. Now coming to the second method of reproduction, that is sexual reproduction. It is the process by which offspring are produced through the combination of genetic material from two individuals of opposite sexes. In humans, sexual reproduction involves the union of a sperm cell from a male and an egg cell from a female, resulting in the formation of a zygote, which will eventually develop into a new individual. The process of sexual reproduction can be divided into three main stages, pre-fertilization, fertilization, and post-fertilization. Pre-fertilization includes the formation and transfer of gametes, sperm and egg cells, in animals and also involves pollination in plants. 
Fertilization is the fusion of sperm and egg cells, resulting in the formation of a zygote with a unique set of genetic traits. Post fertilization involves the development of the zygote into an embryo, which develops into a fetus in animals and a mature plant in plants. This phase includes cell division, differentiation, and organ formation in animals and seed formation in plants. These three phases are really important from the NEET exam point of view, so focus more on these and go through edurive documents of these topics. Overall, sexual reproduction is essential for the survival and evolution of most species on Earth and has played a key role in shaping the diversity of life on our planet. In conclusion, Reproduction is a vital process that enables the continuity of species and the diversity of life on Earth. Understanding the basic features and modes of reproduction is critical for various fields, including evolutionary biology, ecology, and genetics. We hope this video has provided you with a better understanding of the fundamentals of reproduction in organisms. Now, here is a secret on how you can study effectively with the EduRev app. You can learn with chapter notes, watch video lectures, and solve NCRT-based MCQ tests of this chapter on EduRev. And this is available, not just for one but all the chapters of class 11 and 12 biology, and much more for your neat preparation. Thank you for your attention.